Welcome to another video from Greylow 60. Today, it's hot. Oh, it's freaking hot. And uh, I'm, I'm drinking uh, tea. For all you guys that, uh, and girls that know me, no, that's not true. Anyway, that's not what this video is about. I do that all the time. I don't know why I do that. But uh, we're, we're going to be talking about give and take. Moving to a different country, nothing is the same. There, there's, there's things that are going to, to, to piss you off, and there, and there's things that you're going to have to just put up with, and it's, it's the same everywhere. Whether, whether you're in the United States or Canada or Europe or the Philippines or Singapore, it doesn't make much difference. There's going to be things that are different. China's no different than any of these other countries, but China has more more little intricacies that, that drive you up to the wall, is what Wei Fog says. Not up the wall, but up to the wall. I know, she uses like her fishing rod as a fishing gun and uh, yeah, peanut jam instead of peanut butter. Yeah, I get, I get it all. Here in China, you don't need a car. Public transportation takes care of that for everybody. You you, uh, you you save all of the cash that you would have spent on your car, your car insurance, your gas, your oil changes, your repairs, all of that, and you spend two RMB on on uh, a bus, a subway. Uh, you can spend uh, like a hundred dollars Canadian flying all the way to Guangzhou or something. You know, so it's just cheap, cheap, cheap. So. Yeah, but you don't have that car that you can just jump in. You know what, guys? Uh, because of the traffic here in China, uh, I don't like driving here. It's uh, it's not fun. In in Canada, it's fun driving around because you, there there is it's it's wide open roads and stuff. Here, it's not the same. So it's uh, it's one of those things that uh, I give and take. Just like I say, this video is about give and take. Uh, I, I I give my car and I take public transportation works for me population population is hard to deal with there's something going on 24 hours a day seven days a week and this place is nothing but fun so you got to put up with the extra population here in China uh, and along with that extra population is amenities uh, you know 24 hour a day uh, duck restaurant just outside our place when you get into places like Canada, there's not a lot of population. Say Nanaimo, it's got 100,000 people and it's 22 kilometers long. Well, <laughs> go figure. Uh, Nanning is 22 kilometers long and it's got just over 7 million people. Just think the extra stuff that we have here in, in Nanning compared to Nanaimo. And everything in Nanaimo shuts down at like, I don't know, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Some of the restaurants are open, yes, but it's not like here. So the give and take is that uh, you got to put up with the population. People everywhere in the streets and the, the, the traffic is just horrendous here. But then again, I can go out at 2 o'clock in the morning and get myself a burger. Or some chicken feet. Or a barbecue duck head. Yeah, barbecue duck heads are good. So, you know, the pollution. Yes, pollution is bad in China. Well, maybe not so bad in, in Nanning City. But you get into places like Shanghai where or Beijing, holy moly man, that is one stinky city. Uh, yeah, you gotta put up with the with the pollution and, and uh, it's it's part of being a developing country. Uh, you, you look at uh, a lot of places in uh, Europe were just as polluted back when they were growing their countries and that's just one of the things that China's gonna have to work through. And, and people that are coming here and living in, uh, in China are going to have to have to work through too. It's not a good thing, it's not something that I like, but I'm willing to put up with it just to be here in China. After that last wet market uh, video I did, uh, I got a lot of food safety comments and that's another thing that you just have to put up with. Food safety isn't the same as it is in, in the Western world. and. Uh, I guess you just have to be able to, to deal with it. The, it's, uh, it's one of those things that I've been able to handle. Sometimes, oh, uh, what, in uh, 2007, Wei Fong was eating squid on the street in Beihai and she ended up in the hospital for two days, food poisoning. Yes, uh, 2008, uh, we're just off Boilu. We're just between we between uh, getting our place in Hojilu fixed up and, and stuff, so we weren't living in it. 
and uh, I ate street food. I was sick like a dog. But you know what? You take the two pills, you get over it, and life is fine. It's it's one of those things, give and take. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, you but the but, but the give that you get from China is the most excellent food you've ever tasted in your life. The the biggest variety of food that you've ever tasted in your life. It's uh, it's a we eat something new every day here and. Uh, you can't get that in Canada. Roast beef and potatoes, pork chops, roast chicken. When I roast a chicken in Canada, Wei Feng says, "Oh, roast chicken? That's not gonna. That's not gonna be very good." And you know, after being here, I can see what she's talking about because there's so many. But then again, we eat boiled chicken here. But then there's dip. We don't get dip in Canada. How come we don't get dip in Canada? One of the give and takes that I really like about China is the cost of living here is virtually, well, as a Canadian, it's virtually nothing. Uh, you, you don't even you don't even notice the money leaving your bank account because it's such a small amount. But then again, uh, Wei Fong and I own our own home here, and uh, we've got our e-bikes, and so we're all set up. You know, we've got our television, we've got our 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 couch and chairs and everything. So it, when we get here, it's like going home. So the cost of living, uh, that's what China gives us, an easy, inexpensive way of life. Uh, the, the take is you're living rougher in China. Uh, China isn't as easy to live in. Uh, you got the squat toilets. Sure, we could get a Western toilet, but then Wei Fong's dad, in a western toilet <laughs> i don't think that would work oh my god it would just be ew, that would be disgusting don't even we do oh i just gotta get that out of my mind anyway uh but then you got uh, you know on demand uh hot water for showers you got gas heat you got or gas stoves you, you've got uh it's 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 not as clean, I guess, is what, it, is what it comes down to. It's not as clean, and it's sort of like camping at the lake. When you go to the cabin at the lake, or you come to China, it's about the same thing. It's about the same roughness of living. So that's, that's, that's what the take is on that one. Then you get back to the, the heavy population and the noise. It is a noisy place. I picked not a bad spot today, or maybe people are just being good today, but the, the horns honking. The, the bicycle sirens going off, the car sirens going off, uh, but you don't hear any like police sirens or, or, or ambulance sirens, it's different. I guess it's because we live close to the hospital in Nanaimo, we hear it all the time. But, but the noise is, is basically 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, and that's just something that you have to put up with. There is no, there is no give on that one. The noise is just, is, 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 is crazy. It's one of those things that it, it, uh, it does get to you after a while. One of the things that you notice the most uh, uh, when you come to China is, well, other than the food, is the, the internet and the throttling of the internet, the censorship of the internet. And the, the Chinese government, everybody says, why would they do that? Oh, they're taking away this and that from the Chinese people. Well, you know, you can look at it that way, but then you can look at it in a different way, too. Uh, in China, there's no porn on the internet. Why? Because they censor it. Uh, so your, your children aren't uh, going on to Pornhub and, and uh, uh, Sexteen and, and stuff like that. You know, the, the, right there is a, is, a good, uh, is a good idea for censorship and, and throttling the internet. Uh, competition with other, with other companies. Uh, China wants to promote uh, a lot of their own companies rather than uh, Western companies. Facebook for one. Well, the competition for Facebook in, in China is WeChat. Uh, PayPal, uh, Alipay and WeChat pay are, are the competition there. So, you know, YouTube, YouTube, Billy Billy, and, and there's other ones out there too. You know, so what they're doing is they're, they're making it easier for their companies to thrive in their country. And I guess they have the right to do that because not only is it their country, uh, but they make the rules for their country. Being, that, being a, that the internet is censored, I think it adds uh, an innocence to the Chinese people. 
sure, some people are going to say, oh, uh, they're naive. No. Uh, I'd, I'd take the innocence of the Chinese people over the, the arrogance of the Western people any day of the week. When I come here to China, because there are censored internet, uh, because the rules and regulations and laws and, and stuff in China make it more difficult for shit like porn and, 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 uh, and stuff to, to be readily available to everybody, children included, it, it adds to the innocence of, of China and the innocence of the people. It's sort of like walking back 50 years. Like when I was a kid in, in Canada, uh, living in rural Saskatchewan, the, I see the same innocence in the, the faces and the actions of the Chinese people here in Nanning City, seven million people plus, seven million people plus, as I did in the faces of the, the, the people that I knew in a, a, a hamlet, not even a village, a hamlet of 250 people in, in uh, northern Saskatchewan. Yes, things like that make uh, the extra rules and regulations, the censorship of the internet. Sure, I get pissed off when my VPN doesn't work and I get on uh, the support line to express VPN and say, why? I'm paying you for this service. Why don't I get it? And uh, they... Uh, they take care of it in a day or two and then everything goes back to normal. And yes, everybody, the Chinese government knows that every expat in the country has a VPN on their on their phone. And uh, that's just normal. They're not worried about the, the, the expats with their VPN. They've already been tainted by the the internet and the, the just the garbage that you see on the internet in the Western world. It's the Chinese people that they're interested in in, in uh, saving their innocence. I see a lot of people on the comment section of, of my uh, channel, you know, the, the Chinese hating the West and the, and, the, and the West hating the Chinese. I don't know where this all comes from. Uh, and I don't agree with a lot of it. Uh, you know, it's, it, I think it's an ignorance. I think I think it's a lack of understanding. I think it's a lack of knowledge in in knowing. The people that are making these comments uh, are probably sitting in their mum's basement on a computer, or they've had a bad experience with uh, uh, maybe an ex-Chinese wife or an ex-American husband or an ex-American wife for that matter. An ex-Canadian wife. Oh yeah, I could, I could tell you horror stories. No, <laughs> no, it's not that bad. But uh, the idea that uh, there, there's so much hate out there, I think it's a matter of uh, just a lack of education and a lack of understanding. And uh, I think if more people from each country would come and visit each country, it would make a big difference in uh, the, 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 the bullshit that I see on the comment section of my uh, channel. It's just one of those things I really don't like about the YouTube thing was, is the, the comment section and all of the negative shit that I hear. And that's another video from Greylow60. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, push that share button, and thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget to hit that little bell because when I make new videos, if you don't hit that little bell, you won't be notified of the new videos. You'll have to find them yourself. Bye now.